Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I am pleased to provide an update with several colleagues about how Washington, D.C. Uh, has progressed and is progressing um, with our age-friendly status. Uh, so I think most of you know that since the time I was on uh, the council, I have very much been committed uh, to making D.C. an age-friendly city. And uh, today, we are pleased to release our five-year progress report on the age Age-Friendly D.C. Initiative. And I want to thank all of our advisory committee members who have been a part of Age-Friendly D.C. Give them a big round of applause. All of our commissioners for the Office on Aging, give them a big round of applause as well. Um, and let me just say a couple of things about the Age-Friendly D.C. report. Um, we, it recognizes that we are a safer, stronger city. Uh, it recognizes our commitment to diversity and our celebration of our diversity, including the age diversity of Washington, D.C. Uh, we are increasing access to affordable housing, accessible multi-generational housing, and we are providing reliable and convenient transportation options. Uh, we are also expanding our access to wellness services, health care, and safe places to exercise close to home. And the Age-Friendly D.C. Initiative is bringing our community together and helping uh, us make significant strides. I am particularly uh, excited to be here with the World Health Organization and AARP. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm also can say with much confidence that almost three years into our administration, uh, we have been committed to making sure that there's no better place to live, to work, or to age in place than our very own city. Uh, neighborhoods are continuing to thrive as we welcome new families. Uh, we see our unemployment rate decline across all eight wards, and our city has been the safest it's been in many many, many years. Uh, so let me just say uh, a, a few more things uh, about uh, specifically where we've been with our Age in Place initiative. Uh, and uh, I think everybody uh, in this room probably knows this, but in the past decade, the number uh, of Washingtonians who reached and exceed the age of 60 has grown by nearly 15,000 uh, people. And we know that older adults are choosing D.C. as their home, in large part because of how we focus on every agency of the government, making it their business to ensure age friendliness. Uh, and that's why making our communities an easier place to grow older is urgent and critical because of the number of, of people uh, who are over the age of 60 in our city, and that's important. I say frequently that we just don't want people to, to grow older in Washington, D.C but to grow older well in Washington, D.C., uh, to enjoy a high quality of life. And that's why uh, we're investing in more affordable housing than ever. I hear from seniors every day, uh, high anxiety about their housing uh, choices, the houses that they live in or, or in the houses that they rent, um, and their ability to stay in them long term. Uh, I also know, and has been uh, at the top of my list, to make sure that our transportation network um, is adjusted as needed uh, to accommodate more senior residents. Uh, the more transportation accessible our city is, the more often that people will be able to stay in their own homes and age in place, and that's so important. So we've been focused on programs like our Seabury Connector and Transport DC. Uh, we also know that the best senior housing is the housing that seniors live in, as long as it's safe for them to be at home. Uh, that's why we launched the Safe at Home program, and I'm sure the director is going to tell us about the numbers of people who've been helped by this program. Uh, senior safety uh, has to be a critical issue in working with our senior residents, not just on the typical public safety things that we talk about, safety and walking and safety in going about their daily activities, but also protection from financial exploitation. 
and uh, we have to be uh, very mindful that our programs and services and laws uh, address protecting our seniors in that regard. Uh, and we also want to make sure our wellness centers are not just places for what? lunch, uh, but places uh, for fitness and activity and screenings and connecting to the rest of the city uh, and the rest of the government. Uh, it is also uh, our, our opportunity in working with seniors across DC uh, to make sure that we're tapping into their vast experience and expertise uh, and making sure there are opportunities to volunteer and for senior employment across the city. Uh, and we're certainly uh, focused on that. Uh, so I know today we're going to hear from our Deputy Mayor Heisuk Chung, uh, the Director of our Office on Aging, Laura Newland, and John Beard from the World Health Organization, Joe Williams representing the AARP, AARP DC, uh, as well as uh, we've been invited several members of our council and we hope that they can join us uh, as well. But with that, I'm going to turn to uh, Deputy Mayor Chung for a few remarks. Thank you so much, Mayor. There is no better or bigger advocate uh, within our administration for seniors than Mayor Bowser. So I really thank her for allowing us to focus on this on every, every day. I have the privilege of being the chair or co-chair of ta the task force that oversaw this work. And I want to acknowledge a few members um, of uh, the uh, council or the task force, along with some of my staff who have actually achieved this monumental goal. First, I want to recognize Gail Khan. Gail. It is really her day-to-day uh, -day, uh, operations and vision for this project that we are here today to celebrate along with um, just your relentlessness in making sure that I focus, laser focus, Gail. So thank you for that. And really second, I wanna acknowledge our co-chair, Kim Alfonso. And really, I want to thank the members and all the directors who have been present over the last five years to do the very, very important work that brings us here today. But quickly, I have the privilege of being here to just really be the MC, so we can move quickly to the ceremony. So with that, I want to um, just uh, uh, bring up our director of uh, the Office of Aging, and she works day to day to ensure that all of our programs and services and goods that we provide our seniors are the most excellent quality. And what I've learned from the director is that whatever we implement, it has to be top notch. And with that, here's the director, Director Newland. Thank you so much, uh, Deputy Mayor Chung, for that introduction. Uh, good morning, I'm Laura Newland, the Executive Director for the Office on Aging. Uh, the Office on Aging provides programs, information, outreach, and advocacy for district seniors, uh, people with disabilities, and caregivers. We operate nearly 40 programs uh, with our network of 25 community-based nonprofit and private organizations in the city. They provide uh, services that are vital and life-sustaining for residents in all eight wards. So I know every director says that their mission is absolutely critical to uh, the administration, the city, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> aging is a priority for this city. Why? Because aging is living. Aging well means living well. So what is age friendly? Uh, we talk a lot about making sure that DC is an age friendly city and we're getting recognized today, but I wanna really personalize it for you. Age friendly means that when you wake up in the morning, you have choices about where to go, what to do, and how to get there. It means when you wake up in the morning that you're probably one of 97% of district residents who can walk to a park. You can join an exercise class or a book club or play a game of pool with thousands of older residents in attending one of our wellness centers or recreation centers across the city. You can share some laughs over a meal at one of nearly 50 community dining sites all across the city. And you can get to these places safely, walking on sidewalks, biking, using public transportation, or driving. And when you get home, you can breathe easier knowing that safe at home, fix your railing, installed grab bars, making you feel safer and reducing your risk of falling, just like we've done for nearly 800 seniors in DC since January of 2016. 
It means if you need assistance in your daily life with getting dressed or getting around your house, we work to connect you with the appropriate care you need, in some cases even going to your house to explaining program options and helping you apply for services in person. If you need help finding work, DC provides training and job assistance. It means that you can go to any of our 43 age-friendly businesses knowing that they have pledged to serve you in a safe environment. It means businesses and local leaders are looking out to make sure that no one's trying to take advantage of your finances. It means that we are including everyone in emergency planning. Age Friendly is about saying everyone matters here in D.C. Mayor Bowser has made sure that D.C. is a destination for people of all ages, but also remains a community where people never want to leave. You have a mayor who sees you and works hard for you every day and holds her entire government accountable to making sure we're providing the best experience for you. I know everyone here is celebrating our successes that led us here. And tomorrow, the mayor is going to look at all of us and ask, what's next? <laughs> Age friendly means that for us in government, today we celebrate, tomorrow we get back to work. That our commitment does not end at this recognition, as important as it is for us as a city. And for all of us, Age friendly means that together, we are a city of neighbors looking after neighbors. I'm honored to introduce an individual who exemplifies neighbors looking out for neighbors every day. Ms. Kathy Pointer is the Executive Director for Kingdom Care Senior Village, the first senior village operating east of the river in Ward 8 and a wonderful community partner for the DC Office on Aging. Because of her compassion and commitment, seniors in Ward 8 have access to more programs and resources to age well in their community. That includes legal support, social trips, group shopping trips, better access to food through their food pantry, and most of all, being connected to a dedicated and committed network of individuals who serve from the heart. It's a pleasure to introduce Ms. Ms. Kathy Pointer, Executive Director for Kingdom Care. Um, thank you very much. We're just pleased to be here to the mayor, um, to Ms. Newland, to Deputy Mayor, to all of you. Uh, we're just glad to be a part of the Senior Support Network of the District of Columbia. Uh, we have been doing work in Southeast with seniors for a while, but we saw the need to kind of expand what we were able to provide. And we want to thank you, Director Newland and the DC Office on Aging, because they were absolutely um, the reason we were able to expand and open our doors to more people and to support more seniors. So we are the Kingdom Care Senior Village right out of Ward 8. We also want to thank you um, to AARP for paying for an ad for us to be um, advertised a little bit. So we appreciate your support. Um, so many across the city have helped us to um, continue to be vibrant and to grow as a village. We see ourselves as a part of the overall network to support seniors here in the district. Our message is the same as yours, Mayor's is the same as yours, and that is to let seniors know that we care, um, to let seniors know that their welfare and their quality of life matters, and to identify those resources. So we've been able to partner with so many already. We've only launched in May. At March of this year had our open house in May. But since then, we've been able to connect so many seniors to food, um, to other resources. And we just appreciate, again, all the support that we have gotten to be a part of this great work. So we just look forward to continuing to do what we do in Ward 8, expanding our services. Uh, we're getting ready to launch our Kingdom Care Technology Academy, and we're very excited about that. So I was glad to hear this morning about some of the things that are already happening. We don't want to recreate things. We just want to plug in and be a part of what's already happening so that we in Ward 8 can make sure our residents have access to that. So thank you so very much for your support. Thank you, thank you so much, Kathy. Now I have the pleasure of bringing up uh, Dr. John Beard from the World Health Organization. He is a director of aging and life course development at the World Health Organization. He is behind this global network of age-friendly cities and communities. So I am so pleased to welcome you to our great city. Thank you, Deputy Mayor and, and uh, Madam Mayor. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, Populations around the world are rapidly getting older and ageing has emerged as a priority for our organisation. And we frame our work around the idea of healthy ageing. But when I say that, I'm not just talking about the, the absence of disease. What I'm talking about is how do you enable people to be and do the things that they value. 
And part of that is, yes, how can you keep uh, people's physical and mental capacities as strong as possible? But part of it is also about the environment we live in. If we want to do something, if I, if I want to read these days, I need glasses. And, and if somebody has uh, lost some physical capacity, if there's disabled access public transport, it helps them get where they need to go. So the environment is absolutely critical, and that's why we uh, established this global network of age-friendly cities. Um, we did it about seven years ago, and since then we now have almost 550 cities around the world representing over 160 million people. And, and that's... That's an enormous commitment, but um, I have to say, coming here and seeing what you, you have done over the last five years has really blown me away. Uh, and you've heard about all the specific, the concrete projects that have been undertaken, um, but there's themes that run through these that I think are absolutely critical and that really um, gives me goosebumps to hear them. Um, I think, first of all, that the way that you've engaged in the, with the community, that this isn't just a top-down thing, that this is really bringing the top and the bottom together. And I think in doing that, you have really drawn on the, the human and social capital that's inherent in older populations. Older people really want to contribute, and you've allowed them to participate in really exciting ways. Um, I also, I'm really heartened by the way that you've taken concrete plans and put them into action, and you've measured whether you've been successful or not. There's very few places that do this. Uh, and, and also, uh, and probably most importantly to me, I just love the focus on equity. Um, and in fact, we've been talking in Geneva about whether we should make equity a focus for the whole network. Well, you, you've, you've uh, jumped the gun, in a sense. Um, and so I, I said to the mayor earlier uh, that, yes, we have 550 cities, but I have no hesitation in saying that you're one of the global leaders in this area. And, 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 and you know what? That's really difficult. Because if you want to work across an agency and bring all these players together, that's not the way big organisations work. They like to work in silos, you know. So I, I think also, really, there's, I, I, I need to congratulate you on the way, and the mayor in particular, on the way she's been able to bring together each of the different components of, of, uh, of the agency to, to achieve that. So now I'd like to invite Joe Williams and, uh, and Jonathan Stevens from AARP uh, up here to uh, help me uh, uh, present the mayor with a plaque. But I think you, you want to say a few words first? Yeah. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Mayor Bowser, Deputy Mayor Chung, and Director Newland, all who are gathered. Um, in 2012, I was a part of a group of 13 pastors who encouraged the district uh, to start this journey with the World Health Organization and AARP, and, and Mayor Bowser was an immediate champion of that when we started this event. And since then, we have taken what has been a great opportunity and turned it into a marvelous opportunity. In 2022, 20, uh, it is said that uh, one-fourth of the population throughout the country uh, is known as the silver tsunami. Uh, it's going to age. The boomers are going to age. Well, we see it in the district as a golden opportunity. It's a golden opportunity to make sure that there's a quality of life that people can not only age in place, but age in community. And in addition to that, AARP is committed to continuing to partner with the District of Columbia and all who want to make our city age-friendly. I'll tell you a story, and I'll close, and I'll invite Jonathan up um, to talk for AARP from a a global level. I was at a couple of civic association meetings um, recently, and a very a couple of people said, you know, they, when they go downtown, there are no public bathrooms available to them. And I said to them, well, you know, through the Age Friendly DC initiative, there'll be age friendly businesses where you will be able, if you go in as an older adult, you'll be able to go in and ask if you can use the bathroom and not have not to have to be a patron to use it. That is the process of making our city a friendly and that's what we're doing so thank you so very much Jonathan thank you John <clears throat> my name is Jonathan Stevens and I'm the uh, senior vice president for thought leadership at AARP and I also have the privilege of leading our international work um, I, I understand thought leadership is kind of a goofy title <laughs> but it really applies today because DC is a thought leader 
in age-friendly communities. And Dr. Beard outside said, we're a, a world leader in what we're doing to make it not only a stronger community for older people, but a stronger community for everyone. And I oftentimes focus on that word community because communities that are stronger for people who are 50, 60, 70 plus are also stronger for people who are 20, 30, and 40 plus. Um, and with these communities, we build around the health, wealth, and self, which are core to the enterprise priorities of AARP. So like I said, I'm a DC resident, and I'm very proud to be um, here with my city, showing up so well. I'm also working international, and so I look across the world at the work that we're doing with global communities, and I'm just amazed at the 550, in my notes is only 500, so clearly we're rapidly increasing, and how important it is to get it on the agenda, not only at the World Health Organization, but at multinationals and NGOs around the world. And I'm proud to announce that at the International Federation on Aging in September, uh, next year, they're in Toronto, they're going to have age-friendly environments, which I think is a trademark violation, uh, is <laughs> as a core priority for their entire conference. So this is a global conference on aging that also recognizes that work happens at the community level that strengthens all of us aging across the, our lifespan. Thank you. So I'd also like to acknowledge the fantastic support that AARP has given us, not just here in Washington, but across the US, and, and uh, really they've now allowed this idea to ignite. And now I, I want to give the mayor a plaque, and I'll, I'll read to you what it says. Um, so it says, uh, as a member of AARP's network of age-friendly communities, in partnership with the World Health Organization's Global Network for Age-Friendly Cities and Communities, Washington, D.C., is hereby recognized for its leadership and achievement of the five-year process as an age-friendly community, ensuring that Washington, D.C. is a livable community for all people of all ages. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Can we all get in there? Thank you. And if I could have us all hold, I want to invite our our co-chair, Kim Alfonso, to join us for a picture, and the, the chairwoman of our D.C. commission, Carolyn Nichols, and Buddy Moore, I understand, is here. Please join us. Uh, and Commissioner, uh, our outgoing chair, uh, Romaine Thomas and uh, Ron. Uh, if you're here, if you would join us at the front uh, for a picture, I would appreciate it. <laughs> 